Okay, that's All right, you give me the uh, thumbs up. Good morning. Glad you're here and online to worship with us this morning at Cedar Grove. Uh, just, uh, just uh, so glad that we are uh, able to uh, gather here this morning. Just uh, thank the Lord for that, and uh, the ones to uh, be in prayer for uh, Marty and Anita, uh, Tabitha, our country. And one another here at Cedar Grove. Uh, we're going to do a hymn, um, 217, page uh, 217, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Then we'll, be, then we'll do the uh, special with uh, Mr. Laramie this morning, and then we'll uh, have the message right after that. So that's all. Uh, please stand, turn to uh, page 217. I'm doing the guitar on this string that Mike hopefully will pick it up. Yeah. 
turn now, right? Right. Well, it's good to see you this morning here at Cedar Grove. And thank you, Laramie. And I hope this morning that you can say with him that you'd rather have Jesus than anything else. Uh, I know a lot of times people like to say that, but I don't know that they really mean it, to be honest with you. Uh, but it is good to be here this morning. I'm going to invite you to turn with me to the book of Revelation chapter 6. And um, I'm going to do something else while you're going over there. We'll get there shortly. Uh, Brother Laramie, you might want to pull up that list of Antichrist uh, real quick, and, and we'll start with that this morning. All right. I'm going to read you two things this morning. <clears throat> and this is not Marty saying. This is Marty reading what somebody else said. We'll deal with what's truth in a minute, okay? So... Uh, so I'm reading you what some other people said. Now, just pay attention just a minute. This was written in 2008. I believe the future Antichrist will most likely be Henry Kissinger. Henry has advised the last three presidents, including Clinton, and they have taken uh, and implemented his advice. Here is Henry Kissinger's call for a new international order in the middle of December of 2008 after his return from the visit with the new Russian president. The serious need to listen to these videos, uh, if, if it fits prophecy, it fits history, and if you don't take time, then you won't understand the links provided, da 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 da, da. Okay, and then he goes on to say, um, Kissinger is in fact that he is Jewish, and links uh, that will show that his name comes up to 666 in the Greek, and he didn't even spell that correctly, Hebrew and English. All right. Now, let me just say something before I go any further. Henry Kissinger, 
He's 97 years old, I believe, or 98 today. I don't much believe he's going to be the Antichrist. Okay. Here's another one. This was written in 2002. And the name of the article was this. How I know for a fact that Ronald Reagan is the Antichrist. Okay. I come from a long line of Baptist preachers. My people know the Bible. Every male member of my mama's family is either a lawyer or a Baptist minister or both. I sure wouldn't tell nobody that. I know too many Baptists in the, in the jailhouse and too many lawyers that need to be there. Okay. The guy goes on to say this. If you know your Bible, you've got to know your revelations. Revelations is the road map of God's plan for the coming in. Take your Bible, please, there in chapter 6, and I want you to back up to chapter 1, the book of Revelation. Are you there with me? Let's read the name of this book together. The Revelation of St. John the Divine. Let's do it again. Let's go together. The Revelation of St. John the Divine. Okay? It's actually the Revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay? That's how John starts it out in, in verse 1. So what is the book? It is the book of Revelation 1. There's no S attached to it. This guy knows his Bible so well he put an S on it. And I'm making fun of it. I really am because it's going to get better. Just wait a minute. Because he, he's still talking about Ronald Reagan. He says, he's given his evidence on how he knows. And he says, second, Russia must conquer seven nations which will be associated with Magog. And third, the Lord must come and rapture out the church. Real Christians cannot wait for this to happen. Christian lawmakers in the 80s were seeking to aid the fulfillment of prophecy any way they could. Everybody except Ronald Wilson Reagan, the president whose name was the numerical value of the beast, he didn't want to help Russia get Ethiopia. Ronald Reagan died the next year. Okay. Ronald Reagan, not the Antichrist. He goes on to talk about the fact that uh, Satan left his body. All right. And you say, well, Marty, why, why you read that for this morning? Well, up behind me is a list. I think it's 14, if I'm not mistaken. There's 14 people on a list that have been claimed, uh, somehow or another, somebody claims that they're the Antichrist. Almost all of them did. Almost every one of them. Uh, Henry Kissinger's still alive. And uh, Bill Gates is alive. Barack Obama's alive. Barney the dinosaur's still alive. That's funny, but somebody said it. This is a list I got. This wasn't a list I made up. This is a list I got from somewhere. Okay. The World Wide Web is not going to be the Antichrist. It may be used to the Antichrist, but it won't be the Antichrist. Okay, we'll, we'll show that in just a minute. Well, Marty, why you why you want to talk about such stuff and make, make us laugh and make fun of people? Because the church has been fascinated since the inception of the church on who the Antichrist is. And let me just give you a piece of information and I'm just going to tell you, if you meet the Antichrist, and you know who he is, and we're going to go through how you're going to know who he is here in a little bit, but you know who he is, I want you to get his autograph, and I want you to get him to write 666 down there on the bottom of it, and when you see me in Revelation 19 come back, I want you to give it to me, because I'd like to have a copy of it when I go back to heaven. Okay? I'm just telling you. God didn't tell us 
who the Antichrist was going to be. We don't need to have a crazy fascination with who it's going to be. Okay, we don't. There's some things that we do need to know. So are you there with me in your Bible? Let's see what the Bible has to say about some things. We're going to preach a long time this morning. Hallelujah. Ain't y'all glad? All right, good. I want you to look with me. Are you there with me in chapter 6? We're just going to read two verses, and then we're going to read the rest of the Bible. Okay? Verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw and beheld a white horse, and he that sat upon him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. We're just going to deal with those two verses this morning. This is the first of the judgments that is handed down during the tribulation period. The very first one right here. Okay? And we need to answer some questions about who this is that comes out of this seal. Okay? Now, let me give you a little, little piece of information. There's going to be a lot of teaching this morning, okay? Just, just bear with me because we'll get to some preaching eventually, but we're going to do a lot of teaching because there's a lot to talk about. But there is basically four different approaches to the book of Revelation. Okay? Four different approaches approaches you may if you write things down you may want to get an ink pen and start writing some stuff those approaches are the historic approach the preterist approach the premillennial approach or futuristic approach and then the spiritual approach and basically, if you took the historic approach and the preterist approach and the spiritualized approach and you put those three together, they'd all be about the same thing. Okay? But they're, they're, they're considered different. So we're going to call it the historic approach and we're going to call it the futuristic approach. One of those two. The historic approach basically says that everything in the book of Revelation is past tense. Everything has done happen. Now, if it's a preterist, they say it all was fulfilled in 70 A.D. The historical folks say it went on up into the different emperors and all these different times in church history and da 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 da, -da. But it's past. Okay. The spiritual approach, they looking for, they looking for a booger behind every rock. I mean, they are. And there's people that's looking for a booger behind every rock, you know? My grandma on my mama's side, y'all like this, it'd just be a little story y'all can laugh about. When I was a little kid, I'd go stay with them. And I was like a little kid, I didn't want to go to bed. She'd get me in there in the bed, and I'd just be wiggle wormy and talking and talking. And she'd say, I believe I hear sea bogus out there. That was her name for the devil. And then she's, I see sea bogus out there. Boy, I'd be up under the cover. I'd be going to sleep. She could find a booger behind every corner whenever she wanted me to go to sleep. There's people that's looking for a booger everywhere. All right? They're looking for something everywhere. All right? And, and spiritual, they just spiritualize every little thing in, in the Scripture. The future approach, people that hold to a future approach, they say, when you take Scripture and you look at the, the prophecies that have been fulfilled in Scripture, the prophecy, we'll just take one, of Jesus, it says, I will call my branch out of Egypt. That's what the Old Testament says. Where did Jesus' mother and father go to flee from Herod? Egypt. Spent two years there and God called him back up. It was fulfilled how? Literally. Literally. So a future approach takes Scripture literally unless it gives you permission to do something else with it. So that's going to be our approach this morning. We're not going to try to find a booger everywhere. But there's people that, that believe that this is Christ. Okay, so let's, let's deal with that. 
Look at look at verses one and two. I saw a lamb open one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, a noise of thunder, and, and one of the beasts, one of the living creatures. We talked about that last week. An angel, one of the seraphims, said, "Come and see." And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now there's people that say that this is Christ. How can we prove that this is not Christ? Okay. Well, first of all, let's start out with this. The last time we was here, two weeks ago, you remember two weeks ago? Who was it that was in the midst of the throne of God that came forth? He was a lamb that had been slain, right? And he's the only one that was worthy to take the book, right? It had seven seals on it. That is the one that is open in the book now. Is not? Is that not what he said? A lamb came forth and he opened the first seal. Okay? Let's say I was a pro football player. I look like one of them, don't I? Let's say I was a pro running back. And I, on my spare time on Friday night, I was the head football coach of my high school where I went to. And so, on Friday night, my running back is sitting over here on the, on the bench and he's got my number on that I had when I was there. And I call him and I say, get in the game, boy. Go run the ball. And then the announcer says, oh, Marty Granger, he's going into the game now. No, I didn't go into the game. There was one where my number went into the game. And I sent him into the game. If I sent him into the game, I can't be going into the game, no can I? Christ here is sending him out. He's not sending himself out. He's sending somebody else out that's uh, imitating him. Understand that? He's imitating. There's some other, man, there's all kinds of evidence called. We got to hurry. We got to hurry. We'll never get out of here today. Um, he's holding the scroll. Christ is holding the scroll, so it can't be him that's sending himself in. Look at the crown. It says uh, he had a crown. That word crown, we talked about this two weeks ago. It's not the word diadem. It's the word stephanos. It's a victor's crown. He was given a victor's crown. That's what everybody's given is a victor's crown. Well, when we see Christ again over in Revelation chapter 19, he has many, many, not one, but many diadems. Many crowns of honor. Not one. This dude's only got one, and it, it's, a, it's a victor's crown. Well, well, look at it. He's got a bow, a bow and not a sword. When we see Christ in Revelation chapter 1, we see him again in Revelation chapter 19. What does he have? Does he have a bow? No, he's got a sword. So he's imitating. Well, what's the bow represent? He's got the ability to create war, but he don't have no arrows. He's not created war yet. He's, got the, he's threatening it, but he's not doing it. Okay, well, what else we got here? Oh, man, we got all kinds of stuff. The church. The church is not seen again. We see the church for the last time in chapter 3, and we don't see the church again until chapter 19. Now, let me give you something to help you with the book of Revelation. Now, those of you that's heard me teach on this before has heard this, so y'all just sit there and smile and act like you, you've never heard it, Okay. The book of Revelation, one of the things that, that really messes people up, first of all, is Revelation chapter 1, verse 19. They don't realize that that's the, the, where your divisions are. Write the things which you've seen, write the things which are, write the things which you'll be hereafter. Okay? The things that are hereafter start in chapter 4. You don't see the church again after chapter 3. So now, again, we'll take the analogy of a football game. I'm a reporter, and I'm writing for the local newspaper, and I'm watching the state championship football game. There's three seconds left in the game, and, and the team is behind, and the ball is snapped. They hand the ball off, and about the time they hand the ball off, a fight breaks out up here in the, in the stands. There's two things going on. 
There's something going on in the stands, and there's something going on over here on the football field. If I'm writing it, I can't write about both of them at the same time. You understand? Does that make sense? John's writing about things that are going on in heaven, and he's writing about things that are going on in earth. And you've got to separate the two as you're reading the book of Revelation. If you see things in heaven, that's where you see the church in. You see things on the earth, that's where the wrath of God's coming off in. And so you separate the two. And that gets people confused. It really does. They're trying to put the two things together. You can't write about the two things at once. And he threw the right hand and he moved out to the left. And No, you can't do that. You either got to write about the fight or you got to write about the football game, you see. And so that's what John's doing. I'm glad I helped y'all this morning with that. Amen. All right. Let me give you two more things real quick about why this is not Christ. Let me just give you one of them. The living creature, which is an angel, calls him forth. Look at chapter 6, verse 1, the very last. He says, the beast says, come and see. Our King James, don't do us right, right here. The word is just come. Just come. It is a command. In the Greek, it is written as a command. Come. Now, I know in our homes today that we let the kids tell us what to do. But in God's kingdom, God's creation don't tell him what to do. You understand what I'm saying? And so, here Christ is, he's not being commanded by the angel, come. You understand? I believe this is Michael, by the way. Now that's just Martyology. But I believe this is Michael, and he's saying, come. And he is telling the Antichrist, come, it's time for you to go. Much as what Jesus did to Judas. You remember in the upper room? Judas is up there. Jesus said, go, and what thou doest, do it quickly. And I think that's the exact same idea right here. Go and do it quickly. It's time for you to come forward. And the Antichrist is going. I believe this is Antichrist. Now, one of the commentaries that I really like, I ain't gotten nowhere yet, but one of the commentaries I really like to read, he believes it's the spirit of the Antichrist. The spirit of the Antichrist. We'll get to the spirit of the Antichrist in just a minute. It's not the spirit of the Antichrist. He's, he's too narrow. He's got, he's got blinders on. The Antichrist don't come on the scene just out of nowhere. If what, I, if what Scripture portrays right here and in other places about the Antichrist, when he comes on the scene, folks, He's going he's gonna to be somebody that everybody's going to recognize. Now the one dude said that he was Jewish. There is no evidence that the Antichrist is Jewish. Matter of fact, there's right the opposite. And I'll show you in just a minute. I believe that this is the Antichrist. This beast right here, or, or this, uh, this person right here riding this white horse, he's doing everything he can to show himself as Christ. I want you to take your Bible, hold your place right here. I want you to go to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. I'll get there in a minute if you get there before I do. This is definitely the personage of the Antichrist right here, for sure. Revelation 13. Look with me in verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Do you remember a couple of weeks ago I showed you from Scripture how the book of Revelation says, and this sea that you have is people and nations. Do you remember that? Okay, I did. So he rises up out of the sea, and look at it now, having seven heads, and I want you to pay attention to this now, and ten horns. And upon his horns, ten crowns. And upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. Now look at the description of him in verse 2. And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard, and his feet were as 
the feet of a bear and his mouth is the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and his great authority. And then it says, and I saw one of the heads as it were wounded, as it was dead. Folks, this is your Antichrist. Right here, this is your Antichrist. He rises up. Now I want you to think about these ten horns for just a minute. This equates to two other places in the book of Daniel. One of them is the colossal figure. The colossal figure, do you remember the ten toes? I know some of you do. It said they were partly clay and partly iron. It was mingled. All right? And these, and it tells you, he gives you the interpretation of them. These are ten kingdoms. Okay? Then there's another place, and this is where I want, this is where I want you to, to hear. Daniel chapter 7, verse 8. It says, I considered the horns. What do we got in Revelation? Ten what? Horns. Daniel says in Daniel chapter 7, verse 8, he says, I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn. So there was ten, and then another one comes up, before whom were three of the first horns plucked up by their roots, and behold, in his horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. Here is a picture of your Antichrist again. Now, if we had time, I encourage you to go over there to, to Revelation chapter, I mean, uh, to Daniel chapter 7, and just read about them four beasts that they have there. Four different kingdoms. Somebody help me. They were what? A leopard? A lion? What else? A bear? What was the last one? Well, no, it wasn't a dragon. What was it? Yeah, yeah, that's over in Revelation. What what was it in Daniel? What what was that beast? He was a weird beast. He had steel mouth and steel feet and he was a composite beast. Is that not exactly what we just read about over there in, in, in Revelation 13? You ain't never seen no beast like that. It's a composite. It's made of all different kinds of stuff. That's what's coming out of the kingdoms of the world. Something that's all kinds of stuff. And this Antichrist is coming out of the midst of this thing. Okay? Now... Let me stop just a minute and let me say this, and I don't have this in my notes, so this is just something for you to something for you to chew on this morning. These ten kingdoms are the revived Roman Empire. Okay? The revived Roman Empire. Now people have tried to figure out where's the United States in end time events. Where do you find it at? You don't see an eagle nowhere. You see a bear. You see the Roman Empire. You see a dragon. You see the kings of the east. You see Egypt. You see Iran. You see Iraq. You see Turkey. You see Russia. You see it all. But you don't see the United States. Period. And you've got to ask yourself, why? And I've asked myself, why? What happens to us? Well, I think we're kind of decaying right now. I, I, I think that we can see just in what's going on how quickly things can change in the world. Okay? I really do. Right, wrong, indifferent, I'm not, that's not it at all. I'm just saying you see how quickly things can change. Okay? Man, I'm telling you right now, it would scare people to death if the news media would just put on there what, where China's at, how close they are to our door right now. I mean, they're in El Salvador and they're in the Caribbean. They ain't telling us that, but they're right there. All right. We can see how quickly things can move. How many people 
rule the world right now? Do you know? How many people rule the world? Y'all ever heard of the G Summit? Started out like G28, G10, now we're down to G7. One of the most amazing things about the G Summit, do you know where most of it's found at? Europe. Japan is the only Asian nation. We're the only other nation outside of Europe. Everything else is in Europe. No African nations, no South American nations, nobody else. Just Europe. Where's, where's the Antichrist coming from? From Europe. Where, where's he coming from? He's coming out of this ten-toe federation. Out of these ten horns. Now you think about what Marty just said there now. What's going to happen to America? I don't know. I really don't. Could we be sucked back into the Roman Empire? Maybe. Could we go by the wayside? Probably. Probably. We're, we're a divided nation, folks. Something divided can't stand, according to Jesus. And I'll take his word over anybody's. All right? So, so we have this composite beast. Oh, man, i got to hurry, and we're not even making sense yet. So the Antichrist is a real person. He's going to be an honest, good person. As we get there, you'll see there's a personage, the Antichrist, there's a personage who's the false prophet, and there is a beast. Listen to me. There's a beast that's a system. And there's going to be a false religion. You'll see that. It'll unfold as we get there. All right, so... What was Thomas talking about when he was talking about a spirit of Antichrist? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 5, this is where you want to put your messiahs up there, man. Uh, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. Is that list up there? I know y'all can't read it, and he, he can't get you all the way through it. There's 69 people that have claimed to be Christ since Jesus Christ. 69 that we know about that, that, that's actually popular enough that they put up there all different kinds of religions all kinds of stuff here's my first point I want y'all to hang on to we, we've been teaching up to this point it's the first point I want you to hang on to how do you test for the spirit of an antichrist because Right now, there's a spirit of Antichrist in the world, and it has gone forth in the world from the days of Jesus until now. Okay? The spirit of Antichrist. How do you test? Well, I'm glad you asked. 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 and following, says this. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits to see whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are going out into the world. So we're to try the spirits. How do we try the spirits? I'm glad you asked. Hereby I know you the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. Whereof you have heard that it should come and now... Uh, and even now already is in the world. So the first test is does the person confess Jesus Christ? That's, that's the first test. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you, I, I, I wish I had pulled this up. There's a lot of people that make professions of faith. They do. They, a lot of people get baptized, mesmerized, hypnotized, join the church, lead the church, die in the church, go to hell sitting on a pew with their name on a Baptist church roll. Okay? They is. Just because somebody makes a profession of faith don't mean anything. Matter of fact, John's going to give us some more reasons, some more things to look at. So first of all, they need to make a profession of faith. Second, I want you to look with me in verse 4 and 5. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. 
They that are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world hears them. Verse 6, We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us, he that is not of God heareth us not. Hereby you know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Folks, the second way is does the spirit manifest the spirit, uh, does the person manifest the spirit of, the, of, of righteousness? When you get saved, you listen to me now. When you get saved, you make a profession of faith. It ought to start making a difference in your blooming life. Okay? I mean it should. You ought to start growing and changing. There ought to be some fruit in your life. There ought to be a hunger in your life for the Word of God and for God. Okay, amen. I'm glad somebody agrees with me. And let me tell you something. If you're sitting on a pew today and the Word of God is not changing you and you're not growing from the Word of God, then one of two problems is there. First of all, it is the pastor and he can't preach and teach you nothing. And second of all, you ain't really got the Spirit of Christ. And the Word of God's not really making any difference in your life. We ought to have fruit. Went down to my daddy's house yesterday. I'm out there. Now, they done picked all these low line things. We had to get up there and get them off the top. But we, we pick them blueberries. And I'm telling you what, if that thing wasn't producing blueberries, we cut it down and put something else over there. You know what I'm saying? Because we wanted blueberries. Well, God planted you into this world for such a time as this, and he wants some blueberries out of you. He wants fruit in your life. Oh me. I just about need to turn this off. Folks, we have got to exhibit a life that is living. Cedar Grove Baptist Church must manifest the life that Jesus Christ has put in us and we need to be showing that we're a living creature. Not dead wood that needs to be gathered up and burnt. We need to be putting out fruit. Amen, Marty. Hallelujah. The church today, and it's you talk about this church, you talk about the church down the road, the church everywhere, the church for the most part is dead. It is dead as a hammer. And we need to be a living church. A living organism. John said that if you, if you are truly saved, the Word of God makes a difference in your life. The third thing, he says a person is committed to the Word of God. That's found in verse 6. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth us not. Hereby you know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Folks, we need to know the Word of God. The reason you don't get caught up in these people talking about Antichrist, this and this and that and other and, and throwing all this false junk out there everywhere, the reason you don't get caught up in it is because you know the Word of God. That there will save you from the spirit of error. It really will. Now the last one John deals with, it's not out of this passage right here, it's out of John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. But he says you've got a holy unction from God. It's talking about the Holy Spirit of God. He's with you. And folks, if you don't feel the Holy Spirit stir your heart once in a while, if He don't convict you of sin when somebody's preaching the Word of God, if He don't convict you when you're reading the Word of God, when you're riding down the road listening to good gospel music, and He don't convict you, if when you're getting into sin He don't convict you, you're none of His. Oh, boy. I don't like that, boy. Okay. Don't like it. The Antichrist. Let's deal with it. 1 John chapter 2 says this. Little children, it's the last time. And as you've heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrist, whereby we know that it's the last time. They went out from among us. Where were they at? 
They were among us. But they went out from among us. They went out from among us. <clears throat> but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be manifest who they were, that they were not of us. Think about that just a minute. Let me say something to you. I got two, I got two, uh, oh man, I got so much stuff. I've got two definitions I want to give you. Apostasy and heresy. Apostasy and heresy, because it's important. Apostasy. Someone who has embraced the truth and then turned from it. It also speaks to one who has totally departed from their faith or religion. This is one that's went out from among you. And they're manifest in the Antichrist. What is heresy? One who holds to a teaching that is not accepted, uh, accepted or a variance of what is widely understood. So just because somebody's a heretic don't mean that they're an apostate. An apostate is somebody that actually started out, said they were believing the truth, and they turned away from it. Turned away from it. Okay? All right. The Antichrist. Let's get back with it. Hang with me right here. If you'll hang with me right here, we'll be done. Write this down. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting out in verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that it was the day of Christ is at hand. Now listen to what he says. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there shall come a falling away first. And the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So you, you've got two things right there that he says is going to happen with the Antichrist. There's going to be a great falling away, and the Antichrist will be revealed. Okay? After the day of the Lord. Now look, Now listen to it. This is a description of the Antichrist. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. So that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Stop just a minute. Where's the temple of God at? Somebody help me. Is it in Jerusalem? You just came from there. Is it in Jerusalem today? No. What's setting in its way? A mosque. If we believe the Bible, and I do, you may not, but I do, the temple has to be rebuilt. Ain't no Antichrist on the scene until the temple is rebuilt. Jesus said himself, he will set himself up in the temple of God and make himself as God. Okay? So, we got to have a temple. We don't have one yet. So all this is important for you to, to, to know that the Antichrist is not here yet. Verse 5, remember you not that when I was with you yet, I told you these things? And now you know, what uh, withhold it, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. So here's your spirit of Antichrist again. Only he who now let him will let until he be taken out of the way. That's good King James English for this right here. He that is the restrainer is still restraining him until he's moved out of the way. Who's restraining him? The Holy Spirit of God. When will the Holy Spirit be moved out of the way? At the rapture. Why? Yes, yes, sir. I'll tell you what. The, the Spirit of God lives inside of you if you're a Christian. Oh, listen to me, Christian. Listen to me, dear friend. We're, we're, under, some, we're under some weird times right now. 
And if you stand for the things that God says to stand for, we're going to get persecuted a little bit. But what you got, what you got to understand, folks, is we're actually holding back that spirit of Antichrist right now. And when we're taken out, there won't be nobody to say this is right or wrong. Now, the Holy Spirit, He's still omnipresent. He'll still be in the world. But there won't be nobody to stand up and say, God said, thus saith the Lord. And so Antichrist will just run roughshod. And all this stuff, everybody thinks they want. Seattle, Washington. They wanted their, their no-go zone. I don't know what it's called, but their no-go zone. And they run it. See, when, when you have anarchy, somebody's got to be in charge. I mean, somebody's got to be in charge to say what's right and what's wrong. You can't just go wrong and, and do everything that everybody... What makes me feel good might not make y'all feel good. You know what I'm saying? I might say blue, y'all might say red. You know, anarchy this goes crazy and so when the Holy Spirit's taken out when the church is taken out there'll be nobody to say this is right or wrong and then everybody's going to have their opportunity to do the absolute best that they can as a human why is God going to do that because when God puts these people in judgment, when they finally stand before the beam of, uh, not the beam of seat, but the white throne judgment of God, they won't be able to say, you didn't give us the opportunity to try what we wanted to do. You understand that? They'll be held in judgment for what they're actually done. All right, real quick, let me read the rest of this passage right here, and we'll be done. 